What's your Wex word of the day? <laughs> the word of the day ahead of the Fed to me has to be mandate, right? Everyone's talking about the Fed. That's been what's been driving the markets. And to me, what's key isn't to focus on those first two mandates, but to remind ourselves the Fed actually has three mandates, right? Maximum employment, price stability, and moderate long-term interest rates. And that third one, I think, has been key both from where we've come, but importantly, where we're heading and how the Fed thinks about continuing to compress the wage gap and the sticky form of inflation that they've introduced from low wage income earners in particular supporting the economy. Okay, so uh, works for other day is mandate. You're hitting on all three of them, but I, I want to ask you, do you have an outlook for when you expect to see rate cuts? And if we see what's expected, a hawkish Jay Powell tomorrow, how does that shape the markets for the rest of the week? Oh, you moved your head. You don't think he's going to be very hawkish. I, I, I really don't. I think it would be a policy mistake if, if the Fed came out overly hawkish. I think it was a policy mistake that earlier this year they moved to a much more dovish stance. They had signaled to the markets that they were going to raise rates. They were going to stay there and let the bite of higher rates actually feed through to the economy. And it is feeding through to the economy. But earlier this year, the Fed pivoted. I think that was a policy mistake. And I think it'd be a policy mistake to come out too hawkish in this meeting. They have to okay. acknowledge the bite of higher so, inflation, but they need to take a pause. All right, so Jeff, really quick, if you think Jay Powell is going to be hawkish, one of your picks for us is uh, TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. Um, if you believe we're going to see, uh, excuse me, a dovish Jay Powell or more dovish Jay Powell, that would mean that inflation, at least in the future, is more likely, from what he's saying, is going to decline. So then why would you want to invest in TIPS right now if you think the rate of inflation is going to go down? Well, it's not that I think the rate of inflation is going to come down. I think we're stuck in a new normal of 3%. The Fed has quietly quit its 2% mandate. The, the reason why I like tips is because that is the risk of the economy. But at this point, we are seeing in a ton of underlying metrics that the bite of higher rates is working. The consumer is declining. They are defaulting on subprime auto. They are defaulting on credit cards. And most recently, we're seeing them default on housing, a linchpin of the underlying economy. So higher rates are working, but there's always the risk that if the Fed continues uh, where it's at, the consumer continues strong, that, that the bite of higher uh, inflation uh, erodes the value of Treasuries. So we like tips here. Okay. All right, so the Fed obviously has a, a big influence on the global investing environment. Right now, you say when it comes to equities, and we have to end very quickly, that you like international stocks more than you like U.S. names. Is there a certain region you like and why? I would say for the most part, it's less about the region. It's much more about the moat of underlying economy. So what we see here is a, a belief that the consumer in the U.S. continues to be much more resilient than it actually is. If we look international, starting valuations are much more interesting, as well as dividend yields notably higher. So you're being paid to take risk. That's really uh, the, the, the core of our message in looking internationally. You're being paid to take risks. You're not being paid to take risks in the U.S.